Okay, so today we're going to talk about Bill Maher backing off of his scabbing. And we're going to talk about the Russell Brand allegations. But more so than the allegations, I kind of want to talk about the response and the backlash already to them. There have been so many people that have immediately just run to his defense and said, no, they're not. They're lies. They're fake. The girls are liars. Like all this stuff without even seeing any of the evidence, which just is a really sad commentary on how pathetic our politics is right now. But I want to highlight Ben Shapiro's response. And the reason for that is because he is so religious. Okay. He is so moral. He really cares about Western civilization, family values, holding people accountable, morals. But yet, the most pious man in media doesn't have a problem with the allegations. And you'll see in the clip we're going to go over all the excuses he immediately makes before even addressing them. Starting with, oh, it was reported by Legacy Media. Yeah, and? And? You guys don't do reporting. A lot of what most, in fact, if not all, of Daily Wire's content is based off of legacy media reporting because they actually do reporting. Ben Shapiro and his outfit, they don't do reporting. They do commentary. So I just love that I like it when I like it and it's fake when I don't routine that all these people do. They love legacy media and the New York Times and the New York Post and the New Yorker doing any expose when it's something they like. Then they cite it. When it's something they don't like, then all of a sudden it's, huh, why would you even listen? It's legacy media. So, of course, there's that. All right. So let's watch um, how he tries to immediately run to the defense without actually knowing much about the case. legacy media it's engulfed the british media for sure a lot of the media here in the united states is this massive expose supposed expose from the sunday times in the uk accusing russell brand a person i consider a friend of rape sexual assault and abuse from the period 2006 to 2013 now i didn't know russell brand at that time i guess if i had known russell brand i wouldn't like russell brand i also like that he's like accusing russell brand someone i consider a friend oh okay well i guess if he's your friend in that case very much at that time, considering that Russell Brand, by his own admission, in all of his writings and in all of his statements, has basically admitted to being a sect addict and incredibly promiscuous and a person who I would be considered to have engaged in incredibly vile behavior during that entire period. And then Russell Brand has remade himself. And in the period where I've known Russell, which is really the past three or four years, Russell has been a person who is searching for something meaningful. He has settled down, obviously. He's married. He has kids. He's a person who's been trying to put together a good life. Now, can I attest to... Is that a defense? That's like saying that everybody that has ever been accused or convicted of sexual assault can't possibly be guilty because they have a good family. Okay. Russell Brand's character from 2006 to 2013, again, I cannot. I did not know him at that point. Do I think that Russell Brand today is a good person? Yes, I think that Russell Brand today is a good person. Well, I guess in that case, case closed. I just like, this is so crazy. And in other clips, I've seen them say, oh, well, he was an addict back then. Wrong. Russell Brand got sober in the early 2000s. All of these allegations are post him getting clean. Now, is it possible that you're mistaken about people you think you know? Sure, that's possible too. But here is my problem with this particular attack on Russell Brand from the media. My problem is the timing. During the time that Russell Brand was pretty flagrantly and obviously not only promiscuous, but incredibly vile in the sorts of things that he said publicly about sex and about women and all the rest of this sort of stuff, the media were championing him. He was a hero of the left at this time when he was engaged in this sort of behavior. Pause. Okay. He was never a hero of the left. He was a celebrity. And the fact that his defense is, I don't like the timing. This investigation has been going on for years. It's not like Russell Brand just got his rumble channel and as soon as he started speaking out, all of a sudden the media came out against him. No, this investigation has been going on for years, almost four years. And if it is fake, if it is a lie, 
then he'll have a nice lawsuit on his hands because they do not have the same type of laws and protections up for the press in the UK as they do here. It is way easier to sue someone for defamation there than it is here. So I don't think that the UK press is going to come out after a four-year investigation and make all these accusations without really kind of checking what's going on because they also don't want a lawsuit on their hands. But sure, keep going off about the timing, King. He was, he was treated as some sort of person to emulate at this time. He was not only on BBC, he was on MTV. He was being treated as a public celebrity while he was engaging in this sort of behavior. Yeah, he that's different than being a hero of the left. Devil who was who was having he sex was just with a many celebrity. women, insanely possible, and doing insane amounts of drugs. Now, ten years later, when Russell Brand has fixed his life and is trying to make a better life for himself, now he gets hit with a full-scale Sunday Times expose about all of these women. Now, we're going to go through some of the allegations with which Russell has been hit here. Which he kind of Russell doesn't. has denied all of the allegations. And again, in every situation, when you're talking about like a 10 year, 15, 20 year ago situation, it is a he said, she said. There's just no way to verify one way or the other whether somebody is telling the truth or whether they are not absent some sort of DNA evidence. And even DNA evidence isn't going to fully explain what exactly happened if a man and a woman are in a room together because consent or non-consent is a matter of behavior in the moment. It is. <sighs> you know what? You're right. It's a matter of behavior in the moment. And even DNA can't fully prove that. If only there was corroborating text messages from at the time of him apologizing for the incident and also a corroborating report in which one of the victims went to a rape crisis center and reported it and got tested. Yeah, you know, if only there was that. Oh, wait. After the incident happened, this is just one of the four women. After the alleged rape, she went home and didn't respond to him. And then he wrote, I'm so sorry. That was crazy and selfish. I hope you can forgive me. I know that you're a lovely person. And then she wrote, you scared the shit out of me. You're right. I am a lovely person. And for you to take advantage of me like that is inexcusable or unexcusable. You have a problem. You need help. It's dangerous that you think that you can get your own way all the time. Do you know how scary you are when that glazed look comes over you? Oh, glazed look comes over you. That is a corroborating text. She wrote that text to him at the time that this happened. After the alleged victim wrote, I pride myself on being safe and trying to make the right decisions. Obviously, this was a bad one. I'm so disappointed. Russell appeared to reply, you don't need to get tested. I will make this up to you somehow. With love and kindness. Not my original idea, which was more sex. You've been lovely to me, and I'm embarrassed by my behavior. I'm sorry. His number was verified by multiple sources. Oh, this is the remainder of her text that got cut off earlier. When you're, that glazed look comes over you. When a girl says no, it means no. Do I have to go and get myself tested? Last time you asked me... Condom or no condom. When I say condom, that doesn't mean it's optional. You don't have the best reputation. And that's when she said, I pride myself on being safe. Not only does she have corroborating text messages that are verified through his phone number, but she went to a crisis center at the time. And again, this is only one victim, alleged victim. And anybody who knows anything about Russell Brand knows that he was a sex addict and pretty open scumbag. Like, he admitted that, if anyone's ever read any of his books. I also love that the right wing will say all the time, celebrities are evil, celebrities are all rapists, celebrities are pedophiles, like on and on and on and on and on. They'll say these things about celebrities. But then when it's a celebrity they like, then all of a sudden it's, no, he couldn't have. This is a deep state plot. He couldn't have done anything wrong. The deep state's coming after him because he's being a truth teller. Being a truth teller. He has a rumble show in which he just screams about vaccines. How is that challenging anyone? Rumble is owned by a billionaire. 
a billionaire libertarian. Like, none of this is shocking. It all makes perfect sense. But again, the thing is, that is so annoying about conspiracy theories, is that they can never be confronted to the person that believes in the conspiracy. Because every time you provide evidence, they just move the goalpost. Or any evidence is further proof of their conspiracy. It doesn't have to make sense. So it doesn't matter that they always say, all celebrities are this and all celebrities are that. And these things happen in the time that he was a celebrity. But now that they like him, well, then no, it couldn't be true. It's a deep state plot. You can't have an argument with people who are not based in reality. There's no arguing. Up again, and we'll get to the allegations themselves in just one second. The real question I have here is why the sudden interest by the media in all these stories now? Meaning all these stories have been floating around for 15 10 years, over a decade. And only now do they see fit to actually track down all the women who slept with Russell Brand and try to find some who will make allegations or who believe that, that they were victims of rape or sexual. I like how he let it slip that he like just thinks that they're all liars. And he's like, oh, what? Hold allegations. Also, again, the media didn't just start tracking them down now. This has been going on for four years. Also, he's like, Oh, this never happens with anybody in the media. When the media likes you, you never get in trouble. Um, tell that to Harvey Weinstein. Or Weinstein, whatever his name is. Tell that to Les Moonves. I think that uh, Bill Cosby would like a word. I think that uh, Johnny Depp would like a word. I think that Roger, Roger Ailes would like a word. Or Charlie Rose. Or Matt Lauer. There are so many people... That are in the media, Kevin Spacey, that were accused during the time that they had power. Okay. Assault from Russell Brand. And all I can imagine here is that Russell Brand crossed a particular political line that if he'd still been on the right side of the line, the media definitely would not have been going after him. Because you have to, do, you have to learn about the motivations. What exactly changed? In the same way that nothing changed about instead of saying what exactly changed and he moved across the aisle and started asking questions tm then why don't you ask what is it that's threatening about him because they keep saying now that he's challenging the establishment now they're coming after him how is he challenging it what what has he done that's made him such a threat go work for a billionaire a billionaire, a dark money billionaire who spends tons of money on elections to elect right wingers and go work on his platform and scream about vaccines. That's that's the big challenge. I've seen some people compare him to Julian Assange, which is so. It's so stupid, it hurts your head. Julian Assange. Leaked to the press, documents that were classified to show the American people what the government was doing. And they went after him hard. He is still in prison. He is still trying to, they're trying to extradite him back to the U.S. And this has been going on for years. To compare what happened to Julian Assange, to Russell Brand, Screaming into a camera and getting paid for it on Rumble is so absurd. But again, these are the same people, the Jimmy Dore types that say that and make that comparison. These are the same people that purposely omit when they talk about Julian Assange that it was the Trump administration that first prosecuted him. Oh, yeah, you guys don't like to mention that. That's awkward. Because you want to make Julian Assange your hero. But who prosecuted him? Yeah, yeah, that, that gets awkward real fast. About Joe Rogan, from point A to point B, except his political viewpoint. In the same way that nothing changed really about Donald Trump, between point A and point B, except his political viewpoint. In the same way. Yeah, weird how sometimes when uh, somebody runs for office, people suddenly care about their record. Crazy. Nothing has changed here about Russell Brand from point A to point B except his political viewpoint. You wonder about the timing. I thought he, he wasn't was on the right. All this oh my gosh, kind of makes you wonder about timing. Oh my gosh, this is... 
And, and I thought you just said he wasn't a right winger. Okay, so he is. And you're saying he changed his political viewpoint. Behavior. When it would have been the most plausible that he engaged in the sort of behavior alleged. The media were not only uninterested, they were paying him. Ten years later, when Russell has, he's, by the way, not a right winger, when Russell has just decided that Even he's not in favor of a lot of left-wing <laughs> narratives ranging from COVID to, to wokeness. When that happens, wokeness? suddenly you have a coordinated attack, a coordinated... So you're telling me that the reason why there's been a coordinated attack on Russell Brand is because he's really standing up to power. He's really... Ch and how is he doing that? By not agreeing with wokeness. Which again, wokeness is such a nebulous term because its definition changes depending on who you're talking to. But if he's talking about wokeness, like what? He doesn't... He hates trans people. Like, what, what are we talking about? And that's a challenge to the powers that be. Investigation Jeez. between the Sunday Times and the and the tele, and the uh, Channel Four News in Britain. I find the timing at least somewhat suspicious. When I say somewhat, I mean a lot suspicious. We'll get to the allegations in just a moment because some of them, again, are pretty questionable on their face. There's one allegation in particular that's very serious, and then there are some that are pretty questionable on their face. We'll get to that momentarily. You'll notice too that we're eight minutes into this clip. And he, before he decides he's going to address the allegations. So we did an eight minute precursor, preamble about all the reasons why he thinks these allegations are bullshit and the women are liars. And then he gets into them, of course, after like one of his eight million ad reads, because he does like 70 per episode. First, I want to talk to you about the Daily Wire's most trusted private. The point of this all being that we don't know for sure yet what who is telling the truth in the Russell Brand case because the claims have not been adjudicated in court and if he is telling the truth he can sue the shit out of those people the point is look at how these people who claim to be religious in Ben's case Jewish who claim to be religious and a lot of the other people who are defending him on the right in the right wing are Christian how quickly they take the side of the accused abuser without any evidence all they care about is power and who is going to be in their camp they do not give a fuck about religion they don't give a fuck about the bible they don't give a fuck about any of that stuff all it is is who's on my side who's pushing my agenda that i can defend they don't even know what happened? And they're already coming to that conclusion. What does that tell you? Anyway, pretty despicable, but but honestly, not surprising. I listen to Ben Shapiro pretty regularly because I like to know what's happening in the right wing. Um, and this is pretty typical for him. All right, so let's move on to Boomer Mar. So Boomer Mar was engaging or was going to start scabbing and bring back his show real time, despite the fact that the writers are still on strike. Someone actually mentioned in a comment on one of my other videos that um, I should explain like what scabbing is. And just a quick version of that is scabbing is when you cross the picket line. It's when there is a planned strike and everybody's supposed to be in solidarity with that strike and somebody crosses over and decides that they're going to work anyway. So he had posted on Twitter, which has since been deleted, that he was coming back to work. He was bringing the show back, but he wasn't going to be doing like the monologues. It was going to be more of a, like, I don't know, round table, just like going off. But he got a lot of backlash and rightfully so. It's especially gross because he's in the writer's guild. He is one of the writers on the show. So it's like, what are you doing? If anybody, anybody who watches his show knows that, like, he's not actually that liberal. He's liberal, but, like, he has a lot of right-wing views, especially when it comes to the economy, um, wokeness, and when it comes to workers. And I think a lot of that just comes, honestly, from being rich for so long and in a hermetically sealed bubble of rich people. You just, you become out of touch. I watch a show I've seen so many times, time and time again. He is incredibly out of touch. He didn't even realize that during the COVID 
bills that were getting negotiated, how much money was given to the corporations to bail them out. He didn't even know. I mean, it's amazing. He's so out of touch. And what happens when you are that wealthy and that out of touch, you just, you start to drift and you start to not be able to relate to normal people anymore. And one of his, and you see it a lot too in his um, Club Random podcast, he's like, well, you know, they think that like, they should get money and like, you're not guaranteed money. Like just sounding exactly like the bosses. But I guess since he is an executive producer on the show, there's a part of him that's like, yeah, well, I am one of the bosses. So he got a lot of backlash, again, rightfully so. And, and then he came out with this tweet, backtracking. My decision to return to work was made when it seemed that nothing was happening and there was no end in sight of the strike. Now that both sides have agreed to go back to the negotiating table, I'm going to delay the show, uh, return of real time. Basically. Hold on, where's the rest? Oh, and hope that we can finally get this done. First of all, I love Ken Klippenstein. I, I don't even think I've ever heard him talk, but I follow him on Twitter and he's just so funny. Sorry you embarrassed yourself on a national scale. Join my newsletter to educate yourself so that doesn't happen again. <laughs> he's just really funny. He's really funny. Um, And Bill Maher is lying too because... That didn't happen. There really hasn't been any more movement on the on the strike. Both sides coming to the negotiating table. Mm, I don't really think that's happened. I think it was the backlash, which good. He should listen to the backlash because it's a disgusting move to do something like that. Especially since in his original tweet, he's like, it's time to bring people back to work. When like. And he does that a lot. He's done it a lot on his show where he criticizes people for being lazy and not wanting to work. It's like, bro, you barely work. First of all, your job is easy as fuck. You sit in front of a camera and like smugly tell people that you're right, basically. And then on top of that, if you are somebody who has seen his show or watched his show, this motherfucker takes like 800 breaks a year. He will do like three shows and then he'll be like, we're going to be off now for the next three months for summer break. And then he comes back and he does like two more shows. Then he goes, okay, guys, we're going to be off again for Thanksgiving break. And then he's gone until like February. So like, give me a break. You need for everybody to come back to work. You have to have everybody come back to work for the show when you barely work anyway. And you know what? I wouldn't have a problem with him barely working anyway. If he didn't act like a right wing corporate stooge when it comes to other people working, saying that they need to get back to the mines. So spare me with this. It's time to get back to work. You can, it can wait. It can wait. You barely do shows anyway. And the other thing I think the reason why he backed it up or walked it back is because no one else besides right wingers were going to come on his show. People who are in solidarity with the working class and people who maybe even aren't but are smart enough to realize this is a bad move, we're going to come on his show. And he already has a problem with having like way too many right wing guests to begin with. So good. I'm glad he got backlash. I'm glad Drew Barrymore got backlash. Everybody should stand in solidarity with the writers. This is a bigger thing. This isn't just about pay us more. This is about their autonomy. This is about protecting their jobs. This is about AI. You want, even if you're a consumer and you don't care about the strike, you don't care about the workers, this is going to affect the consumer as well. It's going to hurt the consumer as well in the long term. So everybody should care and everybody should support it. Unless, of course, you're one of the oligarchs. And then I understand why you wouldn't support it because you're the one waging the war. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Like, share, follow, and I'll see you tomorrow.